getting power, it's building, we're live on the air. Welcome back to the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I'm Hank Strange. Today we're gonna have a really fun show. We've got my friend Nate Love from Frontier Tactical. What's up, Nate? How's it going? Pretty good, man, pretty good. And we're gonna talk about the Warlock system that Frontier Tactical has. It's a multi-caliber system for your rifle. We're gonna get all up in that. So, um, you know, be, be ready for that. And we all also, of course, have Walter Kaler from Safety Harbor Firearms here to lend his awesome expertise and sexiness. <laughs> we'll see about that. Yeah, there you go. See, look, he's got new equipment. He's sounding all sexy like yeah. Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> you know, he's ready to show off. <laughs> well, something like that. Yeah, and of course, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about current events and news and all that kind of stuff. We've got some, uh, I don't know if it's cool, we've got some new, like uh, the Pew Research Center has some stats about NRA members and how we differ from other gun owners. We've got some news from uh, the, the NBC. <laughs> I don't know if you can really call that news, but they're talking about millennials and that millennials are not into guns unless they're it's in a video game. Thanks for telling us something we already knew. Oh, uh, that's not true. Yeah, and um, also really to me, the thing I want to talk about later, but first we'll talk to Nate, is a Florida judge rules legislature lacks power to make stand your ground law. So that's kind of insane and crazy. They're trying to, you know, Florida recently tightened up its stand your ground laws, which I think we we really need. And stand your ground saved a lot of folks here, and we we don't want to see that go away. But of course, you've got some people who want to tear it down. So we're going to talk about that. All right, Nate. Yes, sir. My friend, um, can you explain to us what the Warlock multi-caliber system is? Sure. So what we do is we replace the barrel nut on an AR-15 with our system right here. Uh, once that's installed, it fits in the same footprint as a barrel nut. Uh, it allows you to take the barrel assemblies on and off without tools. Uh, looks something like this. Okay. So by doing that, you can change out barrels, bolts, and magazines and go through over 90 calibers with a standard AR-15. And you'll keep your same lower, upper, and optics. Um, it's kind of a new way to think about things. Uh, we were probably all brought up using single caliber guns. Uh, our dads and granddads probably had, you know, a, a rifle or a shotgun for every different caliber or gauge that they want to use. Um, but the AR-15 is pretty versatile. Um, so that's what our system does. It'll retrofit any AR-15 on the market. Uh, with a few exceptions, there are some monolithic proprietary stuff out there that we, we just can't make it work with that, so. Right, so now you're saying 90 different calibers? Yep. Yeah, we've tested from 17 Remington all the way up to 50 Beowulf. Wow. Okay. So how does that work? Um, what else are we changing, you know, in order to get that to happen? So what we, the only thing that we do different, uh, we enlarge the ejection port on the AR-15, and that allows you to use the big bore stuff. Um, and then we put a extra power hammer spring in the lower, uh, that allows you to shoot 762, 7.62 by 39 and 5.5 by 39 at the heart of military primers. Um, but otherwise, everything else is mil spec. Okay. Um, and all you're doing is you're going to change out your barrel assembly, your bolt or bolt carrier group. We use bolt carrier groups just because it's easy uh, to just shotgun it, pull out the bolt carrier group, through, throw the new one in, and then whatever magazines are required to shoot the different calibers that you want to run. Um, so basically what, what most people haven't figured out yet, and we, we actually had to compile it all ourselves because it wasn't aggregated anywhere on the internet. Um, so you have pistol bolts. Those are usually weighted to the caliber. So you have a nine millimeter bolt or a 45 bolt or things like that. Um, but with the rifle bolts, because of the way uh, the AR-15 bolts are made, there's only six bolts that run all the different calibers for rifles. Okay. One of them is proprietary to an, another company that made the 50 Beowulf in the, in the 65 Grendel. I think we know what company that is without me getting into trouble with them. Um, <laughs> Can I say it? Then, yeah, yeah, someone should say it because I don't. I think there's there's a lot of folks out there that don't know. Right. Okay. So it's Alexander Arms. 
Um, they have a, a different depth bolt face, and that's the only change. Um, and then the 545 by 39 uh, bolt only runs 545 by 39 millimeter, and we can thank the Russians for that. Um, that's just the way that they made it. So that leaves us four more bolts, and we've changed the names from you know, what you know as a 556 bolt, we, we just call A or Alpha because okay. it runs more than one caliber. Um, so we basically have A, B, C, D, E, F, and A, A, B, C, D, E, F. Is that right? A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, I was pretty sure I, I had it on my dry erase board earlier. Uh -huh. So you got six bolts. A, B, C, D are the ones that we need to concern ourselves with. That's 556, six, 6.8. 762 by 39 and 450. But we call them A, B, C, and D because they run more than just those calibers that they're named for. Um, so now you have four bolts that run over 70 calibers through an AR-15. And that's not something that people really even know about yet. Um, okay. Something that we're trying to bring to the market so that people understand. And it's not, so with our system, it's not that you have to buy a whole new gun. Right? You, all you need from us is a retrofit kit, and you put it onto your AR-15. Once it's installed right here, the rest of it is however you want to build it out. Okay, right? so just to get so just to get a um, a clear picture of this, what exactly would I be buying from you guys? Um, you want me to go get the? Yeah, if you do, if you have the, if you have a kit, because I, I, I know it might be, you know, people, folks might be confused out there that are you selling all the parts to do all these different combinations? We do that. We also sell complete rifles and pistols. We're a manufacturer, um, but you don't have yeah. to. If you've already got an AR-15. I'll go grab the pieces. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about you while you're gone. Yeah. So, what do you think about this, Walter? Have you seen this before? Uh, yes, I have. I've seen his that system before. Yes. Not the details about it, but I saw pictures of it and I think some advertising. Yes. All right. Yeah. So what do you think about systems like this? Um, um, they're cool. I mean, if I mean, I, you know, everybody doesn't want to change all their calibers, but to give that option with that system, you know, so I, um, I didn't realize they had that many options of calibers and stuff. Yeah. I guess it's, it's only limited by what you can sit in the barrel in the, in the, in the, in the bolt head. In yeah. a magazine, <laughs> right? But, yeah, um, it doesn't mean you have to do all ninety calibers, but <laughs> right, it's right. it's very flexible if you want right. to. And you can always start off and and just have you know one or two, and then be able to build your way up. It's always fun to just buy like a separate gun if you can, <laughs> for every different well, caliber you want to shoot. But but there's lots of folks out there that can't necessarily do that. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of space to store a lot of guns too. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's another thing I found in my collection so absolutely yeah you have to keep buying safes yeah. okay so Nate's back all right Nate so you you uh, go ahead now and show us exactly what comes in the box when we buy the system so this is the receiver side receiver adapter side and this is the barrel side I don't know if you can see but there's a just like the barrel nut that you typically have on there right that I don't know if that's very good camera angle there. Yeah, that's so we, good. We replicate that so you can use two-piece hand guards, uh, just like the Magpul one that we have here. Uh, but if you don't want to run two-piece hand guards, we also make a clamp-on for free floats. Okay. A threaded one for free floats for some of the other ones that have a lock ring that go to the backside. Um, lots of different styles um, because there's a lot of different kinds of hand guards and rails and things that are out there. So we try to make it um, as adaptable to the parts that are already out on the market. We don't want to have to make rails. There's right. plenty of people that make them. Um, so we, we're trying to make it more modular and more of an open source so that everybody can use different things um, without having to come to us for everything. Okay, so you're saying that it's um, it, it makes it more adaptable. Now, let, you know what? Let's let's like address this real up, you know, very early because I think folks out there have seen another system and they might get it confused. So um, you've probably heard of the Dolo system, which is I, I guess we could put these two things in the same category, but really completely different beasts, right? I'm not. We're not here to, you know, to, to knock the dolos or anything like that, just to separate for people out there so that, so that they know there is a difference. Correct. Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of different options out on the market, with it, especially for the RFP. 
Um, and so it's, for us, we only really talk about what we do um, because the market's gonna figure out for themselves, you know, what they like and what they don't like. Um, ours really started as a multiple caliber platform from the very beginning. I mean, it, it is a takedown AR-15, that's kind of a happy side effect of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't start out as a, as a takedown gun. We started out as multiple caliber um, to go through, fit everything in the footprint of the barrel nut um, and make everything do what it was supposed to do. Repeatable zero every time. There's no gimmick about it. It's, you know, every time we, we've got um, Frank Maloney, a top shot competitor, uh, Renaissance Firearms is his company. He's taken our system and is shooting beyond a thousand yards with it, uh, with the 6.5 Grendel round. So, okay. I mean, and, and that's repeatable. That's taking the barrel off, putting it back on, and, and still engaging at that distance. And okay. for the barrel that he's got, he's still sub MOA. So we know that he's doing well with that. Um, but right. for, for what we do, so those two pieces that I showed you, um, with this barrel adapter, we have a, a ring that comes with it, and that retains the handguard instead of that uh, weld nut and delta spring assembly that you used to have to fight against to hold the handguards on. This captures the handguard now on that adapter. This is the installation fixture that comes with the kit. Uh, try to get it, there we go, Good. a little bit better angle. Mm -hmm. uh, hold this in a bench vise and you can build up your barrels and they, they repeat uh, center, everything's lined up. You don't have to worry about, you know, is this a line, is that not a line? That's why we throw this in here with the kit. Um, and then also we have our transportation caps so that sits over your, your barrel. Right, so you don't the back. bang up your gas tube or get things into your chamber. You put these on here, it snugs down with a little thumb screw and you can throw it right into a backpack, jump on a four wheeler and go play for the weekend. You don't okay, have and you sell, those, you sell those separately, right? So in right. everything, everything we make is also available individual sale. Okay. So buy a whole kit. Right, and then that block there is designed to help you do dam to reduce d you doing damage when you're putting everything together. Correct, and it also holds everything aligned. Um, it all, it, it's also a go no go gauge. So if you, for whatever reason, get out of your car or whatever, and the barrel, for whatever reason, you have the transportation cap off. Murphy happens. So mm -hmm. if you drop it on the concrete, you can pick it up and stick it in here, and and it'll check and make sure everything is still aligned. Okay. So what is the, um, from my point, I don't know if Walter has any questions here. I'd like to know what the price of this uh, system is. Our retrofit kits start at $299. $299, okay. Depending on what, if you want a two barrel package or if you want free floats or all the different ones that are out. Okay, and then, so with the hardware, what kind of weight does it add to what you already have? Obviously, it's going to add some extra weight to it. I'm just cons Right, it's a little bit. So the, the complete overall weight of the system is 0.69 pounds. It's 11.04 ounces, um, but that's not including taking off the delta spring and weld nut and barrel nut. So okay. track that weight from it. it. And it's right in the center of the firearm, so it's really well balanced. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then when you use the system, um, you're so then you don't have to change your optics. Correct. Okay. There's lots of different ways that you can configure it. We've tried um, like a scout configuration, which is our newest one that we tried out, and that was we took a micro red dot, we mounted it on a rail, uh, free float on the barrel, and then we used a three power magnifier on the upper receiver, and then every barrel had a micro red dot that we were changing out and it was zeroed to the barrel. Okay. Uh, but with uh, with just like this ACOG that we use, this Trigicon, um, we take it and at 100 yards, uh, we shot 18 different calibers and every one of them hit an eight inch steel plate with zero change to hold over, or, you know, adjusting the optic itself. Okay, so where would folks find this, these, uh, this video that you're talking about? Because I think this is a video I've seen uh, the one where we were shooting all the different calibers. Yeah. Uh, that is on our Facebook page, our website, and also our YouTube channel. And okay. So called, just that one's called six calibers in six minutes. Okay. So okay. just search frontier tactical, you know, you've got a YouTube, Facebook, and what was the other one? Uh, well, we have YouTube website, Facebook, Instagram, okay. we're, we've got them all over the place. Right. So, uh, Walter, do you have any questions? No, I think you covered it pretty well. 
Yeah. The original barrels, they on the upper, the barrel slides into the original, um, obviously into the original part of the receiver also. The kind Correct. Of yeah, I, I can show you a little kind of a close up since I've already got it out here. Now, when you go to take the barrel off, you have to lock the bolt to the rear. Otherwise, the bolt goes in and you know, it lugs and you look like an idiot like me all the time when I'm talking to people not paying attention. But so you're going to line it up, stick her in the hole. Got to make sure I've got it lined up. Okay. So I've got it locked in. This is like the clutch on your car. So you're going to hold that in there and give it a turn, a quarter turn in either direction. It'll drop into a slot. I don't know if you can see that. So that's unlocked and that's locked. And then I just let off the pin and keep going in the same direction as where I locked it. Okay. And then to take it apart is just the reverse. So I start to loosen it. And I only need to go about a half to three quarters of a turn, full turn, somewhere in there. Um, a lot of people like to just start spinning and spinning and spinning. You don't need to do that. It's, it's never more than one full turn. And again, it's like engaging the clutch on your car. You're going to push in the pin, hold it down. Once you're holding it, you're going to find that slot again. So that's locked. That's unlocked. And as soon as it's unlocked, remember I just said we got to lock the bolt for the rear. But as soon as it's unlocked, all you have to do is just take the barrel off. Okay, cool. So, I, I mean, I'd like to know one of the first things, um, if no one else has any questions out there, I'd like to know how you came up with this concept and, you know, what's your background in in all this stuff? I don't think we discussed that. Sure. Um, so, it, it actually, I'll start with the concept and where it came from. I was doing my own uh, 10 to 22 takedown stock. Um, and it was before Ruger came out with their newer one that they came out with. Um, and I was just doing it for myself. And one of my buddies said, well, why don't you make a takedown AR? Uh, and I said, well, you can already pull two pins and take the upper off. So why would you want to you know, do a takedown? But then I thought more about it. I was like, well, if you can change the barrel, you can change the caliber. Absolutely. And if you can do that, then that opens up a lot of different things because the People have been shooting a lot of different calibers before, um, but nobody's ever really uh, gone down the road and pioneered and, and actually checked out all the different things that you could do, what bolts run what, and you know what magazines run different things, and, and taking all that information and put it all in one place. And that so that was kind of exciting for us to kind of pioneer our way down that road that nobody really gone down. Um, my background was I was in the army for ten years as an infantry soldier. Um, Went over, played on the two-way range for a while, um, got out of the Army, uh, went to gunsmithing college in Colorado, um, then got picked up from college to go work for the military for all the different branches. Um, worked in Iraq, Afghanistan, and here in the States. As a, as a I started as a small arms repairer and then became a senior weapons inspector. So anything from pistols to towed howitzers I've worked on and done inspections on. I've worked all the way up at depot level all the way down. Cool. So you've got an extensive uh, background here. Yeah. How long? How long have you guys been in business? And is this the first generation of the Warlock system? Yeah. So we've been. Uh, well, the company was started in 2014, um, and then for about 18 months to two years or so, we did all the testing and research and design and shot a bunch of it uh, behind the scenes. We talked to law enforcement, and military predominantly, and we just kind of. November got nudged to go and show the commercial market, the civilian market, and mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, there's a lot of people that might be interested in this kind of stuff because you can do some crazy things. Um, and I actually brought some of the props that you wanted me to pull out here in a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd like to. So um, is this the only thing that you guys sell, or do you sell other? You no, know, we, this, we do other AR accessories. Um, we have a, uh, a, a bunch of, like, uh, I guess you call them handguard cap adapters is what we call them, um, where we replicate that spring steel uh, handguard cap and it allows you to run rifle length handguards where you would only normally be able to run uh, carbine length. Right. I think this this is one of the things that's interesting to me because you're not limited with uh, handguards. 
You can use polymer hand guards. You can use. Seems like you can use a lot of different hand guards. What problems do you run into with hand guards or roadblocks? With that? Um, so with the free floats, and especially with what we do, we do a lot of um, full auto and suppressor stuff um, when we do demonstrations. And what we end up doing is burning our hands a lot when we're using free float hand guards um, because the aluminum becomes the heat shield in most cases. And we, we hear from people, oh, just wear gloves. Well, we live in Florida, so we're not going to wear gloves in July while we shoot full auto at an event. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> kind of crazy, you know. Yeah. I prefer, me personally, I prefer Magpul's uh, hand guards that are two-piece because it has a heat shield in it, and they're light, and they're like 35 bucks. So that's kind of why I came up with, with this two-piece adapter. Uh, so it clamps on and it replicates either the round or the triangular spring steel cap that you would be stuck with. Um, but now I can run a complete rifle length handguard on where I would normally be tied with the gas shoulder here. Right. So then I can, I can put my hand all the way out to the end of the muzzle now, uh, which opens up a lot of different things. You can run mid length on pistol. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with just the two piece handguards. Right. So that's one ahead. of the problems. Yeah. So you know, I'm sure folks out there want to know, like, why would they, why would they do something like this versus just buying a whole, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, why not just buy a bunch of different guns? Um, I guess nowadays, it looks like rifles are pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, how do you guys see it? What kind of money can we save going this way? Is it about the money? Is it about convenience? You know, storage? Maybe putting it in a smaller package? It's pretty much all the above. So I can I can save my money um, on optics because I don't have to put an optic on six different uppers, which gets expensive pretty fast. Because a lot of people, they'll say, oh, I'll just buy another upper or another gun or, or whatever. But every time you do that, you have to accessorize it, right? Mm -hmm. You have to put an optic on it and get a different... Yeah. Well, first you have to go through an effort, a background check. Well, there's that, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got to pass it, too. That's another requirement. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so and then and then you've got to buy other optics. Go ahead. Right. No, go ahead. You're fine. No, no, no. I was just I, I'm just agreeing with you. Okay. Um, but so then now I can buy different barrels and try out different calibers. Um, so and it's not that we're saying you can't buy any uppers or buy any complete guns. We're just saying this is another choice, another option out there, um, because a lot of people have been stuck with the I have one rifle and it only shoots this caliber, so I need to go get another either upper or gun. Mm -hmm. Where in my case, I carry seven different calibers in a backpack, and that's mm -hmm. how I go to the range, and that's how I do demonstrations. So I'm not lugging around, you know, five long gun cases out of the trunk trying yeah. to get to the range. I have literally one backpack. Yeah, and I think Walter was saying earlier, right, Walter, that it makes it easy to store in your safe and all that? Yeah, I mean, it's nice to have a lot of guns, but after a while, it's like, where do I put all this stuff, you know? So, you know, a lot of You'll people don't have... A lot of people don't have a lot of room for that. So. Right. You also have to clean a lot of guns. That's another thing that's kind of a, a takeaway from people. Well, you know, if you're buying them as cheap as, folk, as cheap as folks are saying, you could just throw them away, I guess. Oh, yeah, I guess yeah. So. I'm, I'm being facetious. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really mean that. Don't, don't ever do it. So here's your chamber with our system. Mm -hmm. When you go to clean a gun, I can literally just take off my hand guards and throw it right in a parts washer, the, the uh, ultrasonic. Sorry, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of the word. I could just throw that right in there, pull the whole thing out, and be done instead of cleaning six different guns from front to back. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's um, definitely some benefits. Uh, you know what I, I was thinking? If you've gone through the paperwork for an SBR, right, it, it, it gives you some flexibility with your SBR that you could very quickly change from one barrel to another. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, you can go up, you can go up or down barrel lengths, and if you're going to take the trouble to to get all that SBR paperwork, you can also change. I think in that case, calibers is a thing because like how much <laughs> paperwork is not easy, and then waiting the uh, six to nine months and all that kind of stuff that's going on out there. So if you already have an SBR right now, this is something that you can do and maybe go from two to three to nine millimeter, etc. Well, and then on the other side of it too, not just the SBR side, um, but when it comes to 
hand loading and reloading, I guess is the best way to, to do it. Uh, the H&R Handy Rifle years ago was really popular among the hand loaders because they could try out new loads, new calibers, uh, different cartridges. They could do wild catting and things like that. Um, but they discontinued that rifle program with uh, Harrington Richardson. So a lot of those uh, hand loaders that were wild catting stuff started to gravitate to our page and ask us questions about what we were doing mm -hmm. uh, because they realized as long as the AR-15 could handle what it was that they wanted to do, all the way up to you know uh, 50 Beowulf, a lot of that stuff they could do with our system and they didn't have to stick with a single shot break open rifle. They now have a mag fed semi-auto rifle that does what they want to do with proofing out different loads and wildcats and stuff like that. Okay, so now here's a question from the Adventure Cowboy. He's a very practical guy. Oh, yeah. He has to be. He's a, he's a real cowboy. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. I do know who you're talking about. We yeah. follow yeah, cool dude. He says, like, one thing with the uh, having the same optic is you have to zero all the time. Makes makes a little bit of sense, right? So, like, you have to re-zero. You shouldn't be too far off, but I know, obviously, your point of impact is going to be different. Right. So, and that's one of the things that we've been uh, messing around with, too, is figuring out what that really entails. Uh, most people aren't going to shoot 900 different calibers or all the way to the end of the spectrum of 90 plus calibers. They're going to stick with probably four to six, somewhere in there as a max. Yeah. Um, but with that, it's pretty easy as long as you're sticking with the same load, you know, you're getting the same kind of ammo from the same place or you're loading it yourself to do what's called holdover or counting clicks, which are two different techniques. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you'll write down on your sheet, your dope sheet data on previous engagement, uh, where you hit at 200 yards with this caliber, where you hit at 300 yards of this caliber, all the way out to whatever distance you're going to shoot and then you can use your reticle to figure out how much holdover you need at different distances and use the same optic you don't have to pull it off and re zero uh, you can do that with counting clicks on your turrets you can do that with mills on your reticle um, and we're also working with another optics company that it, it's not there yet because if as soon as i say it's there then people are going to rush out and want to buy it um, but it's an optic that has saved in memory profiles for all the, and it's a digital optic for right. where those reticles are for the different calibers. And that will be so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, there, and you can already do that with, with the thermals that are out there right now. There's a uh, Trigicon thermals, Pulsar thermals. There's a lot of different ones that have saved profiles because they were made for you to take that really expensive thermal and put it on a whole nother gun. Yeah. In yeah. A different yeah. But yeah. when you just leave it on our gun, then all you're doing is just changing between your saved reticles in, in memory. Right. What were you saying, Walter? No, that's cool. Having the saved uh, information, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I don't think we're, we're not there with optics yet. I don't think I've heard of any being able to do that. Well, then you probably haven't heard of the next step, which is uh, where we tag our barrel adapters with an RFID chip. And once you zero it, the next time you come back in there, it pulls it out of memory and goes right to that red automatic. Yeah, that sounds nice. We, we try to look forward instead of say, oh, well, this is crap and that's crap. And how do you do this? How do you do that? Well, we're already working on those questions because we have the same questions because we're gun guys. Right, exactly. I mean, I, I, I know there's lots of questions coming from folks out there, which we welcome. I think you guys welcome that because this is what you want to do, address things. Right. In, instead of just, you know, what, what I complain about all the time, everyone's building the same AR-15. You know, you're trying to address issues that people have, right? right? And it allows us to do all kinds of other interesting things. Yeah. So some people want to know, we could just talk about this for folks who aren't aware of it. How do you deal with the different um, magazine changes uh, magwell-wise? Uh, so every magazine that we use for the different calibers that we shoot, um, we have just standard magazines that we use. Um, and what I'm getting at is like the AK-47 magazines that other people will use. Uh, we use ASC magazines for the 762 by 39 They feed great for us, so that's what we've stuck with. So we haven't had to change out any magwells. Um, for people who want to run AK magazines, uh, MGI, the Hydra, I don't know if you're familiar with their system. Yes, I am, very. So Mac is a great guy over there. He's one of our, you know, pretty good friends and we talked to him quite a bit. Right, um, Matt Gwynn? Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. great guy. Um, 
he has interchangeable magwells and his lowers work with our uppers. Um, we actually spent some time at the range together and we were literally the two booths side by side. So we spent okay. the day at the range, well, I think two days in a row, uh, just sitting around chatting and trying out different configurations. Okay, so that's good to know. If this works with the MGI Hydra, I mean, that just like, you know, expands it. So your, what did you say? Your uppers work with their lowers. Right. So if you want to do the interchangeable magwells, you definitely can. Oh, cool. Okay. Any other compatibilities out there when it comes to, uh, you know, swapping the, because I mean, it really does seem like the more you think about it, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities here. Yeah. And we've been, we've been quietly testing as much stuff as we can, just so that when customers ask us, we can, we can tell them, yes, this works. No, we have tried this and it doesn't work, that kind of stuff. So we've right. tried uh, the Adams Arms piston conversion, because a lot of people ask, well, it only work with DI gas impingement. Or yeah, that was going to be my next question. Like, is this gas impingement or direct? Uh, it can be either one. I mean, yeah, a piston, sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. The Adams Arms piston conversion works with our system. It fits in the same footprint, so uh, there, we, we've shot it. In fact, uh, one of the guys, I don't know if you know Sam Bade over at Adams Arms, they're, they're, their shop is literally 30 minutes down the road from us. It's pretty okay. cool. Uh, <laughs> safety Arbor as well, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I don't know if Walter knows them or not, but... Uh, anyway, we traded one of our systems for one of their systems just to check compatibility back and forth. So we like to work with other companies within the industry and see what what kinds of open source compatibility we can do for everybody. Um, yeah. we, we tried an LWRC system. Um, that didn't work. Okay. So uh, that was, uh, was that a proprietary uh, piston system? Yeah, it was a, it was a proprietary issue. Um, mm -hmm. The barrel itself is non-standard to AR-15 barrels as far as diameters and gas lengths and things like that. So uh, that was only one that we tried, and that was a pistol, a pistol length. So there may be like the carbine and mid lengths and things like that that they have. We haven't checked okay. out. Okay. So so if someone has any other kind of piston system, is this going to work on it? I couldn't tell you because there's thousands of different configurations. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, are you, are you charting this anywhere? Is there like a website or do people have to call up to find out all these different competitors? Because I can see yeah. how it can get confusing. Well, we started, um, we have, I wrote a Google app for, uh, sorry, it doesn't work on iPhones. It only works on Androids, but uh, no. I don't know how to write that program yet. For yeah. that. Uh, but we put it on AR University on the Google Play Store. There's an app that we wrote. That's where we started all of this, you know, aggregation of stuff that we've been learning. Um, now we've gotten it to where we're probably going to just publish it on our website just so it's free and it's out there for everyone to check out. Okay. Uh, because it doesn't seem like anywhere else is all this information available to everybody. Okay, cool. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch away from this for a second. I mean, this is like a lot of information. I'm going to give everyone out there a chance to, uh, you know, get your questions together and everything. And we'll definitely, you know, come back to it. I want to talk about some of the news things. The big thing I want to talk about, and uh, either one of you guys can jump in here, this Florida judge that rules the legislature here in Florida lacks the power to make stand your ground law. Well, and so who that, does? Yeah, I, I think who does? not the judges. The judges are a bunch of... <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Walter. You can say it. <laughs> They're just lawyers. Yeah. So this is, if anyone wants to look for this article, it's in the, this particular one's in The Truth About Guns. I'm sure you could look this up. Uh, he's a controversial Miami-Dade circuit judge, always those guys, intensely dislikes the stand your ground concept, so much so that on Monday he ruled the Florida legislature doesn't have the power to regulate the state stand your ground law. The Florida legislature passed a reinforced stand your ground law earlier in 2017. The new law stems from prosecutorial abuses where people were clearly justified in using force for self-defense, were put through criminal, were put through the criminal justice system, even though there was a slim chance of a conviction in the courts. So, I mean, I think what was happening there is that, you know, all, like you've got the state and then you've got all the local uh, places here in Florida. Uh, and some of them are kind of like activists and they just go after gun guys and, and make them spend money for no reason, you know, scare the crap out of them when it comes to this. And so here in Florida, we kind of clear this up and put a law into effect, putting the burden on the prosecutors. 
And uh, this this guy's really pissed off about that. Go ahead, Walter. Well, like I said, who who if he, if the, if the legislature doesn't have the authority, then who does? Yeah, isn't that what isn't that what the well, that's their is? job, right? Most yeah. of the time. Yeah, exactly. So you know, the legislature they get together, they haggle it out. What gives him the right there? just because he's a judge to say it's unconstitutional or whatever? I mean, based on his uh his political beliefs, I guess, or you know. Yeah, this where does, is the, where does this go? Where does this stop? You know, it's this constant back and forth, back and forth. Well, I don't like it, so it's unconstitutional. You know? Yeah, I think this is the problem that we have with the activist judges. You know, they're just looking for holes in the fences. And uh, we're going to keep going up against this. And, and Florida is so big and you've got all these different places. And you definitely have people that really don't believe in the Second Amendment here in Florida. And short of like not electing those people or the people who put them in office in the first place, you know, we're, we're going to keep facing this, right? Yeah, it's tough. You know, it's, it's not never going to end, I guess. As long as you get still get people moving down here from other places, it's never yeah. going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about this, Nate? So I got a couple problems with it. First, he says that legislature has no authority over that, but yet he's trying to legislate from the bench. So I have a problem with it because if you're going to legislate – over here, but not over there. There's no real difference other than you're abusing your power. Uh, and then the other side of it with Miami Dade, really, like that's, <laughs> us, that's a whole nother state. I mean, yeah, rest, can can we can we float them off and then like somehow get them over to the West Coast, connect them to California? Well, Florida in general is like three different states. You got the right. South, you got the Middle, and you got the Lower Alabama. Um, or or lower whatever it is and Georgia they're, they're not too bad up there because they're but still down south it's like a whole nother world so great yeah. yeah I would hope that we could just buy them all plane tickets to California so they could all be one they can all hug trees together yes yeah uh, I'd like to send them off to North Korea or something Personally, I think California is too nice. <laughs> we still have to we still have to deal with them in America <laughs> well, that was good news out of California this week about magazines uh, yeah, I mean, there, you know, and, and there are some judges on the other side. But, you know, this stand your ground thing, I think it's really important. And people don't realize that there's um, there's lots of people in Florida that stand your ground saves. Um, lots of people that don't have the economics to 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 fight these kinds of things, but had to defend themselves. Right. You know, and and then I know there's there's groups that get together and go after it. But when you look at a lot of studies, I mean, they say that this saves a lot of black people from winding up in jail for legally defending themselves. It's just that it gets swept under the rug all the time. I mean, even here in Gainesville, where I live, there, there was a, um, let me see if I could pull this up. There was a, you know, <clears throat> a fatal shooting at a Gainesville motel deemed justified. And if you really, you, you can look this up uh, for yourselves. Basically what this story was about was that this guy, um, him and a woman were in a hotel room. Her ex-boyfriend was trying to break in through the window and he defended them both and shot the guy one time in the head and he was, you know, pronounced dead immediately. The, the, the interesting, I mean, this is like, you know, just a nerdy thing for me. The guy used a styrog. That's why it <laughs> just sticks. happened to have his styrog. Yeah, that's so head. amazing. I mean, <laughs> You know, he, he, that's so weird, right? Like, who has the Steyer Aug of all things <laughs> on you? Like, I get having a Glock or even having an AR. Yeah, the pocket but you, Aug, that's what it Yeah, was. but you decided, you know what? Today I'm taking the Steyer Aug, man. We're going out today. Yeah. yeah. So, but it happened and, you know, and, and it was deemed justified, you know? So this wasn't really big news. You can look it up and, and, and it made the news here locally in Gainesville, but it didn't make big news because both people involved were, were black people and you know if this gets if this law gets removed you're going to see a lot of black people and other people in florida that don't have the economic backing to fight these kinds of things just getting a like every time this happens you know these guys are just going to get buried in debt just for trying to defend themselves was he driving as pinsgauer at the time <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This that it's such a weird. It's such a weird. Hey, wait thing. a minute! I got one of those. Yeah, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> I mean, maybe this was just his only rifle, and he just took it with him. And you know, this is the thing about like, uh, I guess a Steyer is just like small. He threw it in a bag. 
that's what he had with him. I don't know if I would want to risk because you know, in in when this kind of stuff happens, you can lose these weapons. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, for sometimes for a while depends on who you're dealing with. I mean, this is really. I think this is why Florida set this up like this to stop. For example, here in Gainesville, you've got a lot of in Gainesville proper. You got a bunch of hippies. Is like the nicest <laughs> way that I could put it. You know, a bunch of liberal. Yeah. Tree huggers. Uh, not just tree huggers. I mean, I, you know, that doesn't bother me so much. But yeah, they I mean, all they all they all go the same way. Come on, the same thought. Yeah. Some people don't even think you should be able to shoot somebody breaking in your house. That's how they think that you're 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 doing them somehow wrong when you in shoot, Florida. Shoot, will you shoot? Yeah, there's people that always come out. Oh, you shot the poor kid breaking into the house. He's just trying to steal money to live. You know, steal yeah, your stuff. That, to live. Yeah, that typically is that kid's family. But we have to realize, like, I think there was a case like that in uh, in Miami, where this yeah. kid broke into the house of an old lady to, and and his family claimed that he was doing it so he can buy clothes <laughs> to go to school. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I think he was in a technical school. So somehow that makes it okay for you to break into the house of an old lady at midnight. So I don't think any time is good. Um, but if she get you break into her house at midnight and she's wrong for for shooting you, it, it, it doesn't matter why you're there. She's right. Yeah, yeah. So and I think people have to, way. yeah, people have to start taking responsibility for that. And yeah, it's terrible if you lose someone that you're that's yeah. a relative of yours and you care about. But guess what? Teach them right. Well, they got no like I, like I heard one time from my, a friend's grandma. They got no home learning. Yeah. So yeah, you know. You know, why should we throw away, you know, I mean, this is not a communist place like New York or New Jersey or something where when you uh, when people kick in your door, you've got to run out the back door. <laughs> yeah. Well, well if you run out the back, pull the Claymore before you go. OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, th this kind of stuff, it's tough to see this happening in Florida. Of course, you've like you said, there's people come in here and yeah, they want it to be like where they came from, but they don't want it to be like where they came from. Yeah, that's so, yeah. They should have never left there in the first place. But I don't think it should be like this anywhere in America. No, no. Uh -uh. You know, no, I, I wish that we could give them some of our ninety-five degree heat and see how they like it up there. But um, they can have that. <laughs> yeah. You touched on something pretty important a little bit ago when you talked about the judges and being mm -hmm. able to vote them out and that kind of stuff. Um, one of the things that I find troubling is when I look at uh, the ballot for judges. Mm -hmm. the, oh. There's no R, there's no D, there's no history on this judge and how they tried cases and what the results were. It's, I hate that. Yeah, it's really confusing what, what we I do. Don't, I don't like non-denominational uh, elections. Right. Uh, every, everybody's got a background, everybody's got thoughts on things and put it down there. It's either left, right, or in the middle, but something. Yeah, ironically, when it comes to those guys, it's like that. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not transparent at all. You don't know the history of any judge. They don't yeah. release any of that stuff. So you don't know which way they voted or, or how the, the stuff turned out. You have to actively search records and get just a glimpse of some of the things that show up in the media that they actually decided to cover. But you don't know if, if one judge is pro this or anti that. You're, you're never going to know that. And so I vote every judge out every time the ballot comes up and they ask <laughs> if I want to keep the judge. No, nope, get out. You know, Take the nuclear option. Yeah, that's yep. fine. Yeah, don't blame me for that. You know what I do? I always get an absentee ballot and then search because if you wait until you actually go to the polls, that's not going to happen. What are you going to do? Well, that's what they're hoping on that if, that most people are waiting until they go to the polls. And I think the best way to do it is um, either, like you said, tag these guys or put up a history somewhere. So right. We can yeah, see when they're tracking this and actually post the stuff because otherwise yeah. it's nuclear option every time for me. Yeah. You know? Because the other side of it is people are just going to vote D or R. They're not going to research it at all. Well, what is it? Is it a D? Is it an R? Okay, I'll vote that way. Yeah. And that's that's almost worse. Yeah, and that's why it's really important to vote, and especially for your local stuff. Like the local judges where I live, you know you know these guys. And there are good there are good local judges. There are good guys who are out there and who get it. And we don't want to we don't want to get rid of those guys or kick them out under the nuclear op option that Nate speaks of. But, you know, I get it. If you don't know, then what do you do? Well, if I don't really don't know anything about them, I don't vote for them. Simple as that. I mean, maybe that's not the way to do it, but I don't know. I, I don't just vote assume for them. the system's corrupted them and it's time to go. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. We got to cycle them out. Yeah, man. I, you know, we're going to get a lot more of this crap 
you can you know I know that right now these uh you know the at the gun grabbers are definitely gearing up. I don't know what you guys think, but I can see when I'm from what I'm looking at, they're really gearing up. Yeah, nothing yeah. new though. You know. Yeah, I think they've. I think that lately though, they're they're um they they seem like they're they're really getting ready to start pushing stuff heavy on us. Like they're really gonna take us to task on this, and um. I mean, look at look at what's going on with the with the gun laws that we thought the favorable gun laws that we were going to get under Trump that we don't have. I told well, you, you got to be patient. You can't. It's not going to happen all of a sudden. And I would you say know, it's a good. when North Korea is launching new nuclear or new ICBMs, I don't think it's high on their list of things to do. So, um, go ahead, go ahead, Nate. What were you saying about that? No, I I agree with both of you on that, except for the. They're not here yet, those great laws that we're waiting on. Um, I think they're coming, um, and I think that all the anti-gunners have missed their window. You know, they can gear up all they want, but they don't have the right president. They don't have the right uh, momentum that they thought they were going to have. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, back story going on right now, quietly and not so quietly, about maybe the ATF not even being around in the near future, that they might be dissolved. Okay, so, are you hearing something that we're not hearing? Because fill us in, man. There, there's in. a lot of hubbub that um, you know they're they're not they're not as actively going after people like they used to, um, especially under the new administration. They, if you had to shoulder this whole stop under Obama's administration and try to get away with it, they would have probably come after you. Um, not to say that they you know never have the opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. But as as big of a shift as we've gotten with that clarification in particular, that now we're not even going to pursue it. Um, I mean, for them to come out and say that, I, I don't think you would have had that under the Obama administration. Definitely not under the Clinton administration. If she had won. Uh, so now I'm thinking that maybe they're they're not wanting to make waves or draw attention to themselves because they don't want to be dissolved or you know seriously put on a short leash. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, mostly speculation, but that's kind of my opinion on it. Right. No, I understand. That would be great if we actually get that. What I'm worried about is that like Walter was, you know, alluding to there that the administration is getting caught up in a lot of crap like North Korea or they're launching stuff. I mean, to me personally, that's like a boondoggle. Let's just drop some bombs on their asses, man. Glass of their glass. Them. <laughs> so let's start. Let's start. Um, let's just. You wouldn't think that way if you lived in Seoul, South Korea, though. Um, listen, we're going to say... Because it'll all people. hell will break loose for a while. Mm. All hell. Sometimes sometimes that's the way it goes. I mean, it's not... <laughs> if we don't do anything about it, hell is slowly breaking loose. Yeah, I so know. So what, what do you want? I mean, we have to do something, and ultimately the thing that we have to do is act. So we're either going to act or not act. So if we're not going to act and we're just going to keep like pushing up our chest and talking, then then stop wasting time and do things so that the rest of us can defend ourselves. Because ultimately, those guys are just going to keep creeping. You know, they're going to win there and then just keep creeping. And then there's going to there's going to be other countries getting into the game and fine. You know, then we just need to be to be ready. Like I, I need some nuclear weapons then <laughs> if that's the case. But I think we're just we're just messing around with these guys. And until we actually do something. Right. This is what they know. They're like, oh, you're not really going to do anything. So if we're really not going to do anything there, then it's what's up. It's just a distraction. Do we even actually have anything that we could do? Because if the nuclear option is off the table, then what? Oh, there's lots of things to do. Like what? <laughs> you ever heard of B-52? OK. <laughs> and B-52 so, and B-52 and B-52 24-7? <laughs> right, but do you think that do you think that that's an option that we're realistically going going to take? What oh, happens yeah. with a, what happens with a lot of these countries is they don't really believe that you're coming for them until you actually come for them, right? Where, didn't we do that with Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein and a whole well, bunch of people? Well, that was that was that was a dog and pony show with Gaddafi. So what's this? What kind of show is this? Well, I mean, if you're going to do it, you got to go full on. There's not yeah. a little bit. You got to do. 150% full on, you know, no collateral damage worries, nothing. You just carpet bomb the place top to bottom. Yeah. Cause I feel this is every kind of square like, inch. 
I feel this is kind of like a show myself, to be honest with you. I mean, we start something up, then Dennis Rodman takes his butt over there. If he's there, you kill him too. It doesn't matter. Every square inch of North Korea, you bomb it. I doubt we. I doubt we have enough nukes to drop on Dennis Rodman. No, not not nukes. You don't need nukes. Well, whatever. You know, he, he won't go away. He hasn't. He, after all these years, AIDS obviously hasn't killed him. Well, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's that's. I mean, I'm just joking around with that. But the truth of the matter is, here we're not. I don't know. Am I wrong here, Nate? Are we? It doesn't seem like we're really doing anything. We're still in the same position. Well, I don't think Dennis Rodman has actually stopped in at a North Korean tattoo <laughs> parlor yet. So maybe there's a stronger version of AIDS that might get him that we don't know about yet. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have to be tough to get Dennis Rodman. But I think you you also got a new Secretary of Defense that's a little bit different yeah. than the last administration, and he doesn't really take a whole lot of crap. Um, so I think his recommendations to the powers that be on how to deal with the saber rattling are probably going to be listened to and acted upon. So if I were North Korea, I would shut up. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're positioned. We got to be in the right position when it all goes down. You don't want to be half half ready. Um, okay, so it seems like like what Nate was just saying. It's almost like Trump is doing like this with his hands over there, and then you're gonna get bam right in the face. Well, <laughs> look at what Trump has been doing. He's been, I mean, almost all of his first. You know, a few hundred days has been traveling and speaking with allies and getting everyone on the same page. So, should something kick off, everyone's on the same page right. so that everyone understands where he's coming from and all the playbooks are synced and everyone's getting ready for, you know, the whistle to blow for the kickoff. And when the kickoff happens, then we're all on the same team. Okay, so it seems like it seems like to you guys that we're solidly moving in a direction here. We won't just be spinning on this forever. Uh, something's going to structure things the right way before you do crazy. Say stuff. that again, Nate. You got to structure things the right way before you do all the crazy stuff. Right. You know, some administrations right. just run off into the crazy without having a plan or strategy and, and getting everyone instinct. And, and I think Trump's going about it the right way. Okay. Cool. I don't think cool. there's going to be any uh, demilitarized zone when it's all over with. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I hope there's some serious action that goes on there because I think that uh, North Korea has just been, uh, you know, messing around for a long time. Well, and everybody's everybody's let them mess around. Yeah. It's yeah. easier that way. Give him, a, give him come a few million dollars and a few cases of Hennessy and he's happy, you know, and just keep keep doing that over and over and over. And he gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's, it's a network of, of the bad guys around the world, too. The Iranians and the Chinese play the game, and the Russians throw a little in every once in a while. Um, yeah. You know, they don't think there's any, 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 um, any, uh, um, anything going to happen. Repercussions. Right, yeah, right, repercussions, right, right. right. Yeah, I mean, we made a lot of concessions to the Iranians. Oh, they, they uh, sucked their big. butt. They, 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 they kissed them right in the, in the <laughs> anal canal. In the, in the sphincter. <laughs> Yeah, I and mean, then for what? Why are you kissing the Iranians butt? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I mean oil, once again, oil? You, what oil? Could it, be, could it be? I don't know. I mean, what? what's, you know, what's the reason? I don't get it. Probably because Obama doesn't know the difference between uranium and iranium. I mean, yeah. He thinks that's where we get our iranium from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh it's it's weird. Uh, so so someone has a question here, Nate. They want to know what do you think uh, Trump has done so far for the Second Amendment? Um, I don't think anything publicly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say oh, yeah. give him some time. You know, it's still a little early in his administration. Let's see what he'll do. You know, there's going to be actions speak louder than words, and he's been doing a lot of words on tweets. So. Yeah. I mean, cool. we've never, I think we haven't seen, well, I shouldn't say never, we haven't seen in a long time someone that put out so many signals to be so strong for the Second Amendment. That doesn't mean that you could just go in there and like click your fingers and make everything happen because these are actual laws, right? Not not stuff that you could just sign off with a pen. For the most right. Part. And a lot of that's got to be, the executive actions you can strike with a pen, which is what one of the things that why I haven't, you know, come out publicly, you know, one way or the other, because, you know, he could choose to do that, but there's also repercussions to doing that. You know, you're tipping your hand and all kinds of other strategy things that you don't want to do. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of what I think he's doing on the getting things initiated in the legislative side of it, um, I think he's making headway there. Um, it's not an easy road. So I'm yeah. personally, I'm giving him time to show me what he's got. 
Uh, I'm hopeful, but that doesn't mean that I'm, you know, 100% on anyone not turning around and sticking a knife in our back. Yeah, look, look, you know, there's a lot of, we all have bravado and everything, but ultimately when it comes down to it, we want any pro Second Amendment stuff that goes in to stick, right? We want it to stick. Right. You know, we want it to stick, not just for us, but for our children and our children's children and forever, you know, into the future of America that they have these rights. And so like a big thing is the judges that go onto the Supreme Court, in my opinion, We've seen one of those. We might see another one. And if we see another two or three, it's on. These goofy federal judges, too, that, you know, that that rule from the bench, you know, they just don't like, so like the travel ban thing. Oh, man, it's no good. That's illegal. Well, how did Obama do it then? It wasn't illegal then. You know. Nobody, nobody, no one got up there and got in the way. And if we want to do stuff about all of that that's going to stick, then, and we well, want to do it under the rule of law, the way the system that we set up, I guess we have to be practical. Even a lot of the Republicans that are there from before, they're not pro gun really either. They're just pro senator. So they'll do whatever or say whatever they need to do to keep their stinking job. And um, yeah, um, they're, they're not, you can't, you can't count on them. That's the problem. You can't count on them to be on your side. Yeah. So. Go ahead, Nate. A lot of that stuff is a delaying action, like the Hawaiian judge that you know threw uh, threw down the travel ban and it had to go to the Supreme Court and things like that. Even the the Miami Dade judge, that's going to go to the Florida Supreme yeah, Court. It'll be tossed out. He doesn't have the authority. All that is a blocking action, delaying tactic. Right. Yeah, and we still we still have stand your ground. This is just a, a further provisions to strengthen it, right? So I'm I'm going to assume that what he's talking about is the further pro- provisions to strengthen it. That he's trying to slap down. I honestly don't know what. I think he's just throwing hail marys out there to try to get something because they feel like they're not being listened to, which is good. You know, we <laughs> love the fact that the Debbie Wasserman Schultz and all the other weird oh, God. Are part of the state. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, Go in your closet and scream to yourself because we don't. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Good one. All right. So do something with that face. Yeah. Oh, yeah, listen, we have lots of congressmen and senators and stuff like that out there that represent us on both like on both sides, not just on the Democratic side, on the Republican side. And, and I think, you know, we've got to make sure we keep an eye on those guys. And if they're not real, don't vote for them. Right. Yeah, yeah I'm not talking about only the Democrats like Debbie Wasserman Schultz. There's there's idiots on both sides of the aisle. And that's what we got to be careful about. It's the ones that are out there that are probably too crazy to be trusted to live in public without, you know, being locked up in a straight jacket somewhere. Mm-hmm. But yet they're elected officials in some cases. They're, you know, federal judges in other cases. They're, there's a number of people out there that, that shouldn't be trusted with power of any kind. Yeah. And we should not vote for them just because they have an R behind their name. Right. You know, well, I'll be honest with you. I think one thing that we know, this is one thing that we know, for a fact that Trump has done, he has delivered the death blow to the whatever the Republican Party was in the past. <laughs> I can just tell you that right now. He he got in there and just hit him real hard, man, like a serious virus that you know no one could could uh, stop. Because there were Republicans out there that even though once he got the nomination, they were trying to uh, sabotage and torpedo him behind the scenes, and he's there, you know, and a lot of that's still continuing. They had already tied the the bed sheets to the rafters and wrapped them around their own necks and were standing on the chair. Trump just came in and kicked the chair out. They did most of that to themselves. And, yeah. I mean, just like the Democratic Party did to themselves with stealing the Sanders uh, nomination and giving it to Hillary. It was like you didn't think anyone was going to notice. Yeah. That you pissed off over half of your base. Yeah. I really just want to make sure people stay vigilant out there, man, and don't let these guys get away just because they have an R behind their name. So let me move on quickly to this. This is like from, (laughs) I'm going to choke on it, NBC News. So horrible. Um, Does anyone here listen to NBC News? (laughs) So this is their headline. Millennials aren't that into guns unless it's in a video game. So this is a whole whole article. You guys can look it up. It says uh, protection is the most common main reason for owning a gun, but millennials and Gen Z could change that. A new survey by Pew Research Center found that adults, there's a bunch of Pew Research stuff coming out about guns, 
found that adults age 18 to 29 are more likely to cite sport shooting as their principal reason for owning a gun. That has nothing to do with video games, so I'm not sure where they're going with yeah, that. Where do they get that from? Sport shooting is what most of us do. <laughs> so, I mean, I know there's lots of guys that hunt out there like you, Walter, and Nate. I'm sure you hunt. You, your, your I beard, have in the past. Not your, beard is your beard is proof of that, Nate. There's no way you have a beard like that and you don't hunt. I hunt for sleep. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. You've proven me wrong. <laughs> okay. I know you hunt. Stop. I so, do. Yeah, exactly. So um, older people are saying they want guns for protection, but 18 to 29 year olds are saying they're more into going shooting at the gun range. Um, and they're also more likely to listen to gun oriented podcasts and shows like this, more likely to participate in online forums like this, and gener generally more likely to integrate technology into gun culture. Go ahead. Uh, duh, that's the rage group. Yeah. What? I mean, you know, actually, my people, a lot of guys my age are, are, are do it, but not as much. And then you go like my dad's age and forget it. You know, yeah. Now, the, ar the article is long and it goes on to say it's basically talking about how lots of folks are playing video games. And because of playing video games, you know, they see, you know, and we know it's not it's not super realistic, everything they do in video games. But it's more realistic than it used to be in the past and probably more realistic than movies that are you know, where folks are out there, um, nowadays there's a lot of programming in movies when it comes to guns. All right, all right. Um, yeah, they so. should. They, they definitely get a lot of exposure to, to the games um, yeah. and think they know everything. Well, because of their exposure, if you read the article, they're saying that they're not afraid of guns, they're pro-gun, they don't think it's a bad thing. You know, and then this article is going on to saying the crime and everything is, I don't really know what NBC is trying to say, unless they're trying to, in a roundabout way, trying to say that they admit that they're wrong, you know, but they're saying that, well, yeah, the thing about the millennials, why they are okay with guns is because of video games and, you know, they just want to shoot for fun. They don't want to shoot to hunt, but maybe they're trying to say, because, you know, there's lots of people trying to say that the second amendment is for hunters. No, it's not. It's not about hunting. Sorry. Yeah. Unless it's hunting British, it's not yeah. hunting. <laughs> it's not about hunting. Yeah. What do you think about this, Nate? I, I shared this with you guys out there. I don't know if you, any you guys had a chance to dig through I this started, article. But you really you had, you had lost me at NBC, and then you <laughs> lost me at Pew Research. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. really big on reading fantasy books. <laughs> I, I'm kind of factual based, you know, nonfiction kind of a guy. So when I read this stuff, it's it's almost like I'm reading The Onion half the time. But you know what? They're telling us what we already know, right? Right. I mean, they're not really telling us stuff that we – we already know this in the gun world, what they're saying. We can already see that younger people are into guns, don't see it in a negative way. And even like – you know, a long time ago they used to say because of video games, there will be more violence in America. Well, it does – it does numb you to certain things when they see it over and over and over and over. That's a fact. Are you I saying mean, that foreign terrorists play video games? Is there a connection there? There's a link? Oh, with video to well, they don't need to play video games over there. They make it happen for real. Yeah, you know, say, that's where all the violence I see comes from. Yeah. But when you see some of these kids do this stuff over here, and they, they're just like stone-faced, you know, they're, just, they're worse than those people over there. They have no emotion. It's like a dog with, well, a baby with no family. Or a dog with yeah. no mother. It's like, you know. I do a toxicology report and find out what kinds of prescription drugs they're on before I rule it out as being them. Uh, yeah, I don't think, you know what? I think a, a video games have different effects on different people. Uh, a lot of kids nowadays are just getting things out of their system that maybe, I, I, I would agree that when we were all growing up, you would go out in the streets and, you know, play ball or do, do whatever or get your ass kicked by bullies whatever it was and now it, a lot of that happens in the virtual world i don't know if that's all i don't know if it's all a bad thing i don't think it's a hundred percent bad thing look pac-man's a very violent game people just you know rule that one out as being a game well it's pretty violent and i don't go around biting people even though i grew up <laughs> yeah, you don't bite people on the ass right <laughs> exactly i don't get power-ups and things like that so yeah. to try to to try to point the finger at the video game you know let's let's take a closer look at the public education system and prescription drugs and you know lack of parents because they're working you know 80 hours a week just to try to make ends meet you know, there's a lot of other fundamentally flawed things to look at before we start blaming video games NBC mm -hmm. yeah what, what do you say to that Walter 
Okay. You're, you've got you've got you've got a young young man. I could see him walking around there. Does he play yeah. any video games? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Is he is he violent? No. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. I don't, you know, it's the same thing with my young men that I have. And, you know, I mean, young men, I think are in a lot of danger today because everything they do wrong, they get into trouble for. You go like this with your finger, you go like this, you do anything. You just look at someone wrong. You have a wrong thought. You're in trouble. Or you're bullying them. Yeah. 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 That's 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 another, that's a sore subject too. Bullying. Yes. Yeah. Didn't, Didn't California ban itself for looking like a 30 round magazine? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good one. I've never heard that. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think that it helps. I'm not saying that video games are a solution. I think it would be better if people got out there. But I noticed, for example, with my kids, they're talking to each other. And we say that kids don't talk to each other. But they're just doing it in a different way. When we were younger, we, you didn't have technology. You didn't have cell phones, you know, or I mean, it just it was just different. So now I see my kids, they're playing these games. They play lots of different kinds of games, not just the violent ones, but they but they are conversing with, with each other. They are in groups. It's just changed a little bit. And I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world. It doesn't work for me, but it works for them. And I don't if it was really as bad as people are saying, then we would see a lot more violence and not what they're saying, that there's less uh, that there's less violence. Right. So it's not I get a lot of this quietness out there. What's up? <laughs> You got, are you guys out there? Should I knock on this no, thing? We're here. We're here. You're running. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. So go ahead. Off to something else. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see. Okay. We got some questions here. Hold on. Let me switch sure. over to, the, let me switch over to the questions. Walter, you don't want to talk about video games. I know. Yeah. Well, I know you're saying kind of, Cause it, it, it it's a video yeah. game. You just want it to be. You just want it to be bah humbug video. It t- games. It t- no, until I can walk in the room and the whole room is the situation, <laughs> I'm not going to play. Oh, I don't. Here's I can't. Some... I can't do this screen thing like this. And you know, I can. When you put me in with a with a gun and a simulator, I do pretty well. But well, yeah, I think that I would like to see more stuff like that. I know when we were at Shot Show, that's the future. You, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I saw some stuff that was connected to maybe airsoft. Yeah, Some really good training things that are out right there. Right across they had that. Yeah, that shot. Yeah, I just have a hard time trying to get into any conversation where NBC had a viewpoint because yeah. <laughs> no more NBC. You're right. You're right. We shouldn't you know, even talk about them. I feel bad beating up on the you know mentally disabled people. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> good one. What were you gonna say, Walter? No, I was just gonna say I grew up watching all the you know my dad used to watch all three. Network news is every night because they were staggered. They were one was delayed, so you got you get to watch them all. But it was different then. They didn't. There wasn't this constant political rant, you know. And then the the special interest stories about the poor people and the uh, make you feel sorry for everybody. And it's like it was a the news. They had a Moscow bureau. They had a bureau in Lebanon. They had and you got the news from all over the world, not just this pointed blinders on kind of way to look at the world. So. Yeah, well, you, don't, been, you don't hear anything about Venezuela, what's going on there, and people starving with the socialists and everything else. Not a word. I don't know if you've seen uh, the, I don't know if you call them studies or what you would call them, um, but even Conan O'Brien, I think, did a kind of a spoof and a parody on the fact that uh, the news in national, state, county, you know, regional, you know, city, all these different places, they they loop together a video of the exact same news. I don't know yeah, if you saw. the same words, the same like Almost everything, but different words. people. Yep, and yeah. just to show how agenda oriented the mainstream media right. is. Now. Or and also, yeah. I think just what a lack of of creativity. I mean, who the hell's working in these places that they don't say, "Let's twist it a little bit," <laughs> you know. <laughs> Talk about a lack of creativity. That's kind of how I feel about the firearms industry. So, yeah, well, you know, there's lots of lacks of creativity going out on out there. Can we blame video games, Walter, for the lacks of creativity? No, no. Right, don't, okay. Don't keep going on about video games. <laughs> video game creators are very creative. Yeah. Oh, the well, people so that make them. The people that make them. I wish I was doing them because they make a ton of money and don't. And and they just, you know, it's easy. Make one good game and. Well, it's not that's it's not easy. I, I oh, it's would, not easy, but but it's but once it's done, 
you know, it's 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 there and it, it makes money forever. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm always telling my kids, look, be a producer, not a consumer. And there's so many things to do right. in the field of making. If you want to, hey, don't, don't smoke marijuana. Make the stuff that sells grow. the people to smoke it. Oh, you're saying you don't know. smoke it, grow it. No, no. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hey, if it's Whatever. legal, absolutely. Yeah, make money off it. You know. Yeah. I'm not a big. I'm not supporting all that stuff big time. But you know, if it's legal, make money off it. Why not? Yeah. Absolutely. Why but not? Don't, uh, don't consume it, and you know, and, and and you know, just sell to those who do. Yeah, always. You're always better to be a producer than a consumer. We all obviously have to to uh, consume things. So what is what is to blame? Let's have that discussion real quick before I get to other questions out here. What do you think is to blame for the lack of creativity, Nate, in the firearms industry? Oh, uh, oh so only in the firearms industry. We'll just leave it at that subject. Or are you talking about in America as whole? Uh, if the two, <laughs> the two are probably connected. So, yeah. I would say America as a whole, we need more mentors, um, mm -hmm. people to step in, kind of like the big brother, big sister stuff to where, you know, everyone, everyone that's successful, somebody helped them get to where they were in some way, shape or form. Not to say that, you know, I didn't create this, but, you know, people saw the potential in me and they kind of got helped me, guide me, you know, molded me in the right direction and, and it gave me a hand up mm -hmm. in many cases, especially on the military side. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we had more mentors that were taking an active role in, in our youth, um, that would be very beneficial. And obviously there's no D or R there. That's just everybody being decent humans. Um, and then in the firearms industry, we need more people at the upper levels of firearms companies. Uh, right now we have a lot of stuffed shirts that would rather be playing golf. Corporate. At a range. Um, you know, they either it's mommy and daddy's money or, you know, however they got to the part where they're, at now, um, they could care less about guns. They're they're just there to implement lean management practices and money, Kaizen and Six Sigma, you know, and bottom yeah. line, you know, for their share, or to run the business into the ground and then sell it off and move on to another business. Right, the vultures that disassemble it all and scavenge it and kick the can down the road when they refile the next chapter eleven. Yeah. We see that. Uh, I see that often. I see it even in uh, like there's family owned gun stores that have been around for a long time. And the current family members have just squandered the money and just don't give a crap about their customers. And uh, in, in this particular environment, I've seen some gun stores that are asked out right now because they didn't buy the right guns that people wanted. And they, they didn't listen to, to the people that worked for them that knew what folks were looking for. And it's the same thing to me in the firearms industry where there's lots of companies, same situation where they're just not listening to either people inside the company or outside that are trying to say, look, this is what we want. Make this. Right. And yeah. I think until that changes, you're going to see uh, companies closing their doors, companies being bought out and restructured. Um, I mean, there's no, there's no real uh, answer to what they're going to be able to do other than go out of business. I mean, you're seeing it at the highest levels of the largest companies in the industry right now. Some of them you're, most people aren't even aware of right now. I mean, mm -hmm. We have a lot of contacts within the industry that, um, so we have a little uh, insider information when it comes to what, what other people are doing and how they're getting it done. And uh, there's shakeups at the highest level that most people don't even know are about to become more public. Mm -hmm. You're seeing it reported every day. Um, Vista Group, uh, they couldn't find $500 million at the beginning of the year, and then another 240 last yeah. quarter. So yeah. It's things like that that most people don't pay attention to. Those are those tremors right before the major earthquake hits. That's kind of how we look at it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I hate to sound like Alex Jones, but there's there's lots of good um, evidence out there that some of these companies are going to they're going to go down in flames. Right. And, good. and that, that mentality of too big to fail. No. There, there's no federal backing with a lot of these. Yeah, there's no firearms. There's no gun company that's too big to fail. They need to fail. Right. Because because like Remington, poor Remington. Oh, my God. Oh, oh yeah. poor Remington. Jeez. Um. They're selling batshit shot, they're batshit selling crazy Remington. That shit crazy Remington, basically. Well, welcome to corporate gun world. Mm -hmm. The people, the people running it, don't have a clue of what's going on out in the, in the industry. 
you know, they, they make the same thing. They've been making the same guns for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And then they decide they're going to get rich making AR-15s, and they've all done it. And look what happened there. Their, their girl didn't win the election. So now they're all now you got three hundred dollar or three ninety nine AR fifteens everywhere and they can't figure out why they can't sell anything. So what are you saying? That firearms companies had a business plan of Hillary Clinton becoming president? We've talked about this, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean they really why, seriously did. Why why would Springfield Armory make an AR fifteen? What 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 is the what is the, because the fact that the everyone else old, was making an AR-15 wasn't any kind of indicator to them. They felt they felt left out. So or, they, or they thought they were going to make a hundred million dollars selling them. So you tell me which one. <laughs> Why is NRA getting into concealed carry? Same reason. Yeah, that's where the trend is. That's it's, where the bottom line is. I mean, but anybody can build. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Anybody can. Tomorrow you can start building AR-15s in your garage. And make it just as good as Springfield Armory or Rock right. River or Coal. Yeah, I think there's a danger that companies face when they think it's almost like they believe in the welfare system, and we're just going to come and drink at the trough. So well, because they, because they are because of their Freedom Group or Remington or this company <laughs> or that company, we're all going to come there and go ARs. Oh, I got to have those. I don't I don't have enough of those. I'm going to buy them. Or because it's the NRA, we're going to go. Oh yes, I want you to tell me who should be my trainers, and they better all be super tactical ninja, super operator, mega dudes. <laughs> Well, right. They, I mean, that's what they feel. They feel like, oh, this is this is what it is. And people will just come and buy it from us. And uh, that's not true. When did the people that run the Freedom Group get tired of some of these and start letting them go? You know, aren't there shareholders in the Freedom Group? Or maybe I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. Not, you know, or, I, I, go ahead. I mean, OK, we got DPMS. I used to buy stuff from DPMS and there used to be a person on the phone. That it sounded like he was from Minnesota, and mm -hmm. and probably had a nice beard. And you, yeah, well, I whatever, you know. Yeah, seriously. You get, yeah. you get your stuff. You have a relationship. They get bought by the Freedom Group. Now the parts people are in Alabama. The other ones are up in the Northeast. Nobody knows what the hell is the other one's doing. You order, they change all the part numbers, and it's just a cluster. Yeah, and everyone's reading to you from a script. It's not a dude right. that's actually a gun guy that gives a shit. They're your basic sales whores. They're sell. You like used to sell encyclopedias and then used cars. Now they're selling gun parts. You know, yeah. they don't know anything. They just read off the list, like you said, and oh yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Boom. Yeah. So how how do we get here? Or you know, I you mean, got here because of greed and political. Uh, the last eight years of Obama. That's how you got here. <laughs> so it was just too easy. There was just uh, oh, yeah. too much feed. Yeah. You can make anything and throw it out there, and depending on what the latest shooting was, like Newtown and everything else, people bought it. Yeah. So, so then you have a, a separation in companies because you guys represent small companies and you're very nimble. You are very creative people. You can switch around and do other things, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then you have these big, massive mega companies that are um, like, motion. Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, like, you know, these big cargo container ship, like, you know, these uh, big cargo ships and stuff like that. And they take forever to turn around. And right now they're just they're just heading towards if this is a flat earth, you know, do you know there's people who believe the earth is flat? Yeah. yeah. So if this I don't believe that. But if it is flat, they're just sailing for the Go edge. Toward the edge. Yeah. yeah, they're just going for the edge. Yeah. The flat earthers were able to watch fireworks all across the world <laughs> in the world from their front door. Yeah, why can't I see the Eiffel Tower? Like I said, why right. can't I see that? Yeah. yeah, they saw all the fireworks. <laughs> yeah, I think it's scary. And I've spent, you know, from, it's scary and it's kind of frustrating because I spent a lot of time talking to companies and trying to convince them of stuff that, you know, uh, I mean, we all communicate with the customers that are out there. This, these kind of forums that we're doing, these kind of things that we do give us access to the people that are actually buying things and they can tell us what they want and, and all that. And, and these guys just don't listen. They just, they're like, no, no, we're just going to make, we're just going to make uh, ARs. We're going to make 1911s. Everybody's going to yeah. buy those. Why would, no, and no, nothing against anybody that makes 1911s, but why in the hell would you get into the business of making 1911s? I would, it was like buying a bar or buying a restaurant. Because we don't have enough. We don't have enough it, 1911s. Yeah, but it's, it's good for a while and they all go bankrupt. Yeah, but may, maybe we need more 1911s. <laughs> maybe we need more technology for a pistol. 
I mean, I know there's some new pistols out there that just came out this year, and I feel so sorry for those people. There's been a lot of hype about some of these guns, but they're just another pistol. Yeah, and, it's and, and they're high end pistols too, so I don't know how they're going to make it. I really don't. Bless their hearts, but I just don't see it. You know, it's I, probably I do it. we don't make telegraph devices anymore. <laughs> we're, not technology. we're not going to rush out there. You know what? We should start making telegraph. Yeah. Morse code. Dee, 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 dee. Let's make a new Glock. Da, da, da. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay. You don't, you know, uh, so how long do you guys, I'm interested to know what you guys think. How long is this going to last? Is it going to make it to SHOT Show? Is it going to make it all the way up to the next NRA show? What do, what do you mean, Meg? Kicking the can down the road. Yeah. A lot of suppressor companies will be around. I can tell you that. Um, the guys that only make suppressors, they're going to have a hard, they're having hard days. So, um, you, know. you can only eat so many AR 15s before the, the back feed, mm -hmm. that transmission comes back and blows out your speakers. Yeah. Um, they didn't have an exit plan or a, a plan B when it came to who was going to win the election. So they all spooled up for Hillary yeah. and that, you're going to get to see like almost a reverse of what happened with Obama in 2008. But on, you know, instead of the consumers getting bent over, now you're going to see the manufacturers. That bent yeah. Themselves. I mean, cause we're, we're seeing like, um, for example, I think Smith and Wesson just doubled down on their savings Gem and Gemtech. Oh, yeah. They just bought Gemtech. Um, uh, well, no, also I'm saying Smith and Wesson has like a lot of deals out there. I think they had a deal that was going to expire. They expanded that. Well, let me, tell you what, let me tell you what Remington's doing. Like the uh, 870 shotguns that I buy that I make into little shotguns. Normally, they're about 300, 330. Um, I got a deal. Uh, you could buy it for 249 and then there was a $25 rebate on each gun from Remington. So that's like 225 for a Remington 870. That's like giving them away. Compared yeah, you to haven't seen – I don't think you've seen Rock Bottom yet. Well – so yeah, they're in, they're in bad straits. I think. I mean, I got I, I don't know, you know. But I hope some. To, I hope some. Not to be mean, but I hope some do go under, because it'll make the industry more lean. You know, it'll it'll maybe well, wake people up. You know? I mean, in the meanwhile, we'll get better prices for people out there. But just how much can we consume? Like, how many shotguns do oh. we need? <laughs> I mean, I you know, like I I only need as many yeah. as people in my family have hands. <laughs> But well, I, I, I can't dual wield these things really well unless one of you guys makes up a dual wielding device that I could somehow, I don't know how to do it. How many, I, I'm on one of the Facebook boards with shotgun stuff and you see these pictures of grandpa died and here's his guns. He's got 20 pump shotguns lined up. You know, it's like, well, do you need 20 pump shotguns? Well, he liked pump shotguns, you know? So, yeah. How, yeah. so if the price is right, you know, people will buy stuff whether they need it or not. So, yeah. yeah, you have to form a posse really fast. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse is like, like hand them out, hand them out. Yeah, you can all you can always have them loaded up. And then I think, uh, and then there's still some companies that are coming out with new stuff. So did you guys yeah. see that Sig? I know folks want us to talk about this, so let's get into it. Sig Six Hour introduces the MCX Vertest. Has oh, anyone seen this? I haven't seen it. What is it? Uh, well, besides being an MCX, yeah, I heard about it. So I guess I got to go pull it up now. <laughs> Is it Virtus. different than regular MCX? What has it got? I don't know. That's why it uh, plated or something, or has it got stars machined in it somewhere or something, or what? It's a I don't color guard, right? Isn't that what they do? Yeah, um, I don't know. You know, at this point, there's been so many problems with with this MCX. Personally, you know, to me, they're expensive and all that. I know you've you're you you're in there, Walter, right? Mine mine runs all right. I, yeah. The reason I have one is because I make the stock for it. That's why okay. I have an MCX. So, okay. Um, but, and yours runs fine. You haven't had any problems. You have to haven't had to send it back with any. Uh, oh, they had a rebate. They had a recall on them for okay. a, sus a suspected problem. But right. Um, so the new one. It looks. It says uh, this is on the firearm blog. Shout out to those guys. Uh, new piston okay. five five six slash three hundred blackout six hour MCX Vertus. Six hours just released. An update to their popular MCX platform branded the Virtus SIG is um, debuting three of four new models, leaving one cloaked in secrecy for time being. 
Available as carbine, short-barreled rifle, or pistol with brace, the new gun shares many similarities with its predecessor. After browsing the images and watching the videos, it appears the adjustable gas block and trigger may have, been, um, have had some design updates, whereas the remainder of the changes are mainly cosmetic. <laughs> well, they, they, so it's a 300 blackout MCX. Basically. Yeah, because, you know. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's been waiting for that. We need more of those. Um, yeah, I guess we I actually wanted a 76239 one, but they didn't have it. So. Oh, okay. So, I mean, you know, we're saying that no one's changing anything. They are technically changing are. a little bit of stuff. Right. I mean, yeah. how much you got to be careful on the change, too, because you can end up like Caltech and have all kinds of cool guns and not be able to make any of them mm -hmm. or make enough of them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Caltech's got different problems. They can't sell enough of their crap. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's all crap, but they can't sell enough of what they're making. I mean, they're manufacturing stuff all the time. And well, it's I, just, the I, just saw the, I just saw statistics on pistol manufacturing last year, I think it was. Mm -hmm. They sold a shitload of guns, but Ooh. not but Celtic. Yeah, they made it. They made a shitload the, of guns. But, but the basic pistols, that's what mm -hmm. they sell a lot of. Yeah, that's their bread and butter. I mean, so that's if you want to talk about that. I mean, they've been making the same handguns like the uh, P3AT, PF9, and uh, what's the? I forgot what the other one is. They've been making those guns for a long time. They haven't changed anything. I mean, the P3AT was uh, ripped off basically by uh, Ruger. By Ruger, Ruger updated it. Keltec hasn't updated it, <laughs> well, and they and they don't they probably don't feel like they need to. Lots of folks out there buy it; it's cheap. And when you have problems them. with it, you can just keep sending it to Keltec, buy another one until until the one you sent in gets fixed, you know. And then when that one comes back in, you can send the other one. You could just keep rotating them, <laughs> you know, until you get everything sorted out on them. I think you see most of your innovation from the smaller companies, anyways, because they yeah. are more uh, likely to to take a chance. Yeah, um, and they can and they can yeah, make things happen a lot faster most of the time too. Yeah, I don't think Caltech. You know, I mean, we can we can talk bad about Caltech if we want to. No, but let's not go into Caltech. I don't then. think. Well, I mean, I try to stay balanced about every company, and I honestly think, in light of the conversation that we're having, Caltech doesn't really have anything to fear here because um, they're in a completely different category from it, everyone else. They don't make AR-15s. Yeah. Yeah, they don't make AR-15s. There's a high demand for they they can't make enough of what they're making. Right, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, and then they have another big thing going for them. They don't take loans out on anything. Well, then that's another thing. You know, like um, a lot of I don't per, we don't personally have a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of machines or something like that. But some of these people they they get in the business and they buy twenty machines, and next thing you know, they're not selling anything, and so much for that. Yeah, <laughs> they're gone. So. Uh. I think that's what I think that's what's happened to a lot of uh, companies out there. So you know, there's companies who just got a lot of machinery and built up, thinking that they're just going to be selling AR-15s like it's going out of style. Yeah, and that's that's not going to be happening. Some companies geared up, thinking that they were going to be selling suppressors like they're going out of style. Um, you know, I don't think suppressors. I hope they come off the NFA. We're all waiting for that. There was a new piece of legislation just entered. I, I forget what the details. I saw a flash about it. Where um, the sh what was that? Go ahead. The Shush Act. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that kind of the same thing, just a different different name? or? Uh, that was actually to remove it completely and make it only a weapons accessory, like a flash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here's a, here's a question. Let me do some questions before yeah. we get people rebelling out there like, damn you, Hank Strange. <laughs> You like you know, me. Yeah. So someone says, uh, we know Hank's stuck on the Glock 43, Nate. What's your EDC gun? And then, so after Nate, Walt, what's your EDC gun? So Nate first. Um, so I actually carry more than one every day um, because one is none and two is one. <laughs> right. And That's totally my, logical. My background. Um, so, and I probably get a lot of uh, hate for this, uh, but I carry a Springfield XD. Uh, but I carry an original XD back when it was taken right off the uh, uh, HS2000. Ah, I have an HS2000, though. Oh, look at you guys getting, getting nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, I carry, and it's a 45 ACP because it's the one of the largest reliable pistol calibers that I can run without getting into the extreme crazy stuff. Um, and then I also got one that you already mentioned before, which is a Keltec PF9 as a backup. Okay. Uh, and that 
I am a gunsmith, so it runs great now. <laughs> I was just about to say, how does that BF9 run, my friend? <laughs> that's that's why it's had hundreds okay. of rounds put through it to break it in, and all the you know magazine catch issues and all kinds of other crazy stuff that I've had to work out. But it's it was an ongoing project, so mm -hmm. it was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, there's you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's some of what people like about Caltech, I'll be honest with you. Some people like that whole adventure of fixing it. You know, it's like dudes who like uh cars that don't always work right. Or breaking right. in guns, right? Yeah, yeah. So and I'm not not I'm not knocking them. I mean, I've got a lot of Caltech guns. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a show about that one day, just bring in all my Caltech guns and talk about them. And if you guys are you are you familiar with the uh, Caltech stuff, Nate? Yes. Okay, so then we should do that show together. Walter, are you familiar with Caltech stuff? Because you're, yes, I don't know. Yes, I am. I have a um, the sub two thousand um, mm -hmm. first first gen. Okay. And, um, and once again, it's a bang bang jam, bang bang jam. Okay, so we should. When can we plan to do the 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 big Caltech show where we all come <laughs> like bring out Caltechs and show them and talk honestly? Like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to knock Caltech. I still believe it or not, I still have friends who work there. <laughs> So even I'm though they me. even though they hate me um, institutionally, <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a firearm snob. You know, if it goes bang, I probably like it, and I probably have yeah. either shot one or own one or something like that. So yeah. you know, the people that are oh well, it's this or it's that. It's like yeah, I, I, I don't it. ride in a Ford. I don't ride in a Chevy. I was like, oh, also, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, we have to give a lot of props to Kelgren. I mean, you know, I mean, who can we go back to that you could think of? That has, that has that kind of mind and has designed things in, in right. the light of what Kelgren has designed. I, I don't know. Well, and yeah. you, what you're seeing right now is the exact opposite within the industry, which is just monkey see, monkey do, copycat mm -hmm. stuff, and that's their business model. Yeah. You, know, you, you asked, uh, or you mentioned before about uh, we haven't seen rock bottom yet. You're absolutely right, because the same people that have made these terrible decisions to get them where they are now, wait until they're under stress. Now they're going to make really <laughs> terrible decisions. Yeah, yeah. We Make can sure. see some signs of them doubling down, though. Lock right. all the windows. Lock all the windows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Cockeye's got a gun. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Walter, yeah. yeah. So, Walter, what is your EDC? Let's not – let's. Lola just gave me the – <laughs> Oh, we can't subject. talk about the bad stuff? That could no, no, no. She just said I'm getting off topic. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm about to well, get smacked upside the head. You know I have the Glock, the 40 – uh, what's the 380? Yeah, I always forget. 42. Yeah, 42. Yeah, yeah. That was because my um my Keltec 32 got taken out of the car. So um, because I left it, got, it got taken out of the car. Oh, oh wow. Okay. They, how people go down the street and open doors and take change? Mm -hmm. Well, they took the change and the Keltec. So, oh wow. Okay. The door wasn't locked. Okay. So we did a police report and all that stuff. Yes, right? we did. Yeah, my okay. fault. Yeah. Um, that's um, does Caltech have a replacement policy? No. <laughs> That's not that's Sky. And, that's Sky. Yeah. Sky has the replacement policy. I also have a PF9 too. Mm -hmm. as that's what it is, a PF9. Um, How's yours? Um, it goes bang. I mean, I haven't put hundreds of rounds through it, but it seemed to work when I've used it. So, okay. um, you know, I, I, I really like that little 30, uh, 1903 Colt that uh, Babyface P just fixed. Yeah, the 32 ACP. <laughs> yeah, it's kind it's, of, yeah it's, it harkens back to days long gone. I mean, it's simple too. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, okay, it's 32 auto, but it's thin, it's small, um, it's simple, and I like the simple part. I carry, I like a talker of pistol. Yeah, but, I was going to yeah. say, I know you carry old stuff. One, because you have the ammo, <laughs> and you have the, like, you know, experience and everything with them, and you just like that kind of stuff. So it serves yeah. two purposes. I mean, it's, I it's protection, I like the, and it's cool. Right. I like the I like the Glock, too, but it's just, it, it just doesn't, you know, I don't like, I guess... Because it's so hot, I don't wear lots of clothes to cover things up. So, if I can't drop it in my pocket or something, it's or stick yeah. it in my back pocket. It's kind of yeah. Uh, so, I mean, so tell folks what happened with your Glock real quick because uh, <laughs> your Glock, the sights were off. Uh, yeah, I, well, I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, we're, well, I didn't even notice it. Probably because I'd carry it in my back pocket and sat on it a few times, and probably pushed that rear sight to one your side. Your butt so can push a, a sight. That's a that's a that's a that's a serious butt. I got some serious gluteus, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but no, we're, my son is shooting it, and it's going like two foot off to one side, and he's like, "What's wrong with this thing?" We looked at the back sight, and it was all twisted to one side. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess did we got to. 
What? Yeah, you probably had it in your pocket with keys or something like that. Well, yeah, it could have been. I mean, yeah. when you're sitting on a bar stool at Hooters in its back pocket, you know, anything can happen. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't get in trouble <laughs> over that. Okay, so let's answer another question here because I know we have a lot of questions, right? I, I think you're seeing some of these, Nate. Um, if you are, hit me up. Real Cujo says, what's the stat of the multi-cal SHF weapons platform? So that was something we were working on, Walter. People want to oh, know what's up oh, with that. Oh, oh, oh. The, 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 the do-it-yourself kind of gun? Yeah, that's Sean. That's my butt. That's Sean, Real Cujo. Yeah. Um, we got to get back to it. Yeah, we got to get back on it. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's just been, it's been kind of busy. Yeah. Trying to get caught up and stuff. So. Should we tell Nate about this and the folks who don't know? We were working on an open source gun that we could design something out there that so folks can build their own gun yeah. and, you know, make it something uh, like maybe Glock based using the Glock, Glock magazine, magazine or yeah. something like that. And then we would, we would put all the designs together, put something cool out there. People could make it themselves or different companies could come on, make it yeah. however they want to. Yeah. It's kind For of sure. ambitious. <laughs> That's why you do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we need to get back to that, man. Seriously. Oh yeah, I know. I, I've just been busy trying to make money. So um, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. There's gonna be lots of time coming up. This, you know, this well, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's one thing I, that I have an advantage over a lot of people is I sell a lot of little things too, as you know. So sten parts and pieces and barrels and so when 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 the gun stuff gets really slow. I'm still selling pieces and parts and yeah, and Nate's like, like that. that too, right? Nate from from I, I went and hung out with Nate at Frontier Tactical. I do that kind of stuff before I get into people. I spend a lot of time digging in, but you guys are like that as well, right, Nate? Yeah, we do a, a lot of things. You know, we. I mean, we you got to you got to be versatile. Do that because when times get tough, right? You know, at least, at least you're making some money. So, you know, so like, you think don't double down on ARs? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, <laughs> this we might may, be a good time. This might be a good time to get into the AR well, business of building. If you're gonna AR. do AR stuff, you have to do unique AR stuff. That's what people are buying. They're buying different stuff. They're buying the funny receivers. They're buying the stocks, yeah. um, the braces. Yeah, you know, folks are still buying accessories. There's guys out there getting accessories and 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 yeah. making. They people want to make their guns what they want them to be instead of right. companies forcing down their throat. It has to be this. It has to work right. this way. Yeah, they right? can personalize things. Yeah, and there's lots of good companies out there. And if they're if they're companies, if, if there's anyone out there from companies and you feel like you're being missed and people aren't giving you light, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. Um, I know Nate knows a lot about these companies. So Nate, when you come across, because you, you do this, you come across these companies, let us know so we can, instead of just like bashing the horrible actors, let's do something to put the good guys up there. Uh, then I would take a close look at, um, there's a group called the Antares Alliance, and it's a group of getting close to 50 companies, might have even surpassed 50 by now, um, of companies that got tired of uh, people paying lip service to our veterans and first responders, uh, taking money on their behalf to say that they were going to do charities, and then that money gets spent at a bar tab instead of actually for charitable things for the veterans and first responders. Uh, so we pretty much have decided that the private sector has broader shoulders anyway. Um, so we've come together to, to basically take care of our own uh, one team, one fight. And that's turned into probably one of the greatest um, business to business networking that I've ever seen. Cool. Um, nothing like it exists anywhere. You have companies from every different industry all working together on the, I mean, cross promoting each other's stuff on social media. We're, you know, helping each other at events. We'll get to an event. I'll set up my, you know, tent or display or booth or whatever it is, and I'll look over and I'll see if somebody else needs help. Holy crap! It's called being a decent human. Wow! It's yeah, not just that me. whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, and and to see that, you know, that there's still, you know, positive characteristics in, in your humans to the left and right of you is, I mean, it's amazing when you've got other people in the industry that are doing the exact opposite. You know, they're being leeches and vultures and scavengers and, mm -hmm. you know, knocking off other people's ideas and ripping off other, you know, things that are out there and not coming up with anything new or original. You've got a, an entire group of younger companies that don't, they don't use them as a role model. 
we, we say, you know what, your, your business models are obsolete. You're a dinosaur. It's time mm-hmm. for you to go off and die somewhere because we're going to take the guide on and we're going to, you know, carry it into the future. And we don't need you or your, you know, negative ways. And that's, that's been a huge benefit for our company, but it's also been a huge inspiration for us. To actually okay, so just tell us, what, what is the name of that again? Uh, it's Antares Alliance. Um, I'll put it into the, into the chat so everyone can spell yeah. it. All right, and we'll, we'll try to get that in the description. If I don't, um, just hit me up. So um, let's, uh, okay, someone wants to know, does Frontier Tactical make accessories? You do. Oh, it's not allowing me to put a web address in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, hmm. I'm just going to spell the name and they can look it up because it's just antarislance.com. Yeah. Yeah. And then shoot me an email or a text or something and we'll, you know, Lola and myself will make sure it gets into the description. Folks want to sure. know if you guys make accessories, Nate. Yes, we do. Yeah. They've got lots of cool stuff. Is that all on the website yet? Because I know you were showing me some of the... Some of it has made it there. Some of it's not quite there yet. Um, we've been literally slammed because people actually started to see what we do and you know that they can use whatever AR they already have um, and just start switching out calibers so it's kind of a snowball effect when you're a smaller company and you got to keep up and make sure that your customer service always stays on top that's right. it's, it's been difficult but not impossible so, yeah and, yet, and, yet, and people don't understand sometimes with that you know you're out in the shop making stuff for you're doing things you can't be sitting in front of the computer all day long answering emails when you just can't get anything done you know, yeah, right. Mean, or, or if you don't ask them back immediately, they get all, if anybody's listening to it, they get all pissy <laughs> and you're not paying attention to me. And I'm like, so sorry. You know, I mean, all you had to do is pick up the phone and in a couple words, I can tell you exactly usually what you want to hear, you know, right. Instead yeah. of doing that, instead of trying to figure it out, decipher their email, you know, it's, the like, other side of it's like multitasking, right? Like I can do one thing well, but if I have to do 20 things, I'm probably not going to do all of them very well. So do you want, yeah. you know, a watered down diluted version of excellence or do you want, you know, a, yeah. I think the beauty of a small company for folks out there is that they can reach out to you, communicate with you, get questions answered. You know, we're talking about the big companies. The beauty of the small company is this, you know, the flip side of that, everything has a price. The flip side of that is that, you know, it's going to take some time because if you're helping out someone else or you're trying to get product out, it may take you a little bit to get it addressed. But I think these are good guys that are trying to address everything that's coming up, right? Yeah, we're, we're, you know, Everyone that we deal with, everyone that you deal with, uh, we, these are all probably the best companies in the business. You know, there's a reason we all kind of gravitate towards each other. Um, the the shady, you know, sketchy folks we try to disassociate ourselves with, um, not just because of the guilty by association, although that's part of it. Yeah. Um, so because we don't want to get screwed over as a company, we don't want our name drugged through the mud as a company. So we try to associate with the best in the industry. Absolutely. And, and that's been kind of, you know, what's helped us along and grow so fast. Cool. Let's try to, um, you know, before we wrap this up, let's try to hit, because I know there's questions out there that people have for you, right, Nate? Have you seen any of those? Um, I've been trying to go back and forth, but I also want to pay attention to the conversation. So. Right. So you want to hit us with some things just in general. I'm sure you won't hit on everything, but folks have some questions out there. So if you can give us a quick, like, wrap, you know, we promise to come back to the uh, Warlock system. If you can give us a quick wrap up on that and then maybe while you're thinking about it, answer some questions that folks have out there about the system. Sure, so uh, a couple of the comments that have already been posted were about how modular the AR-15 is. And that's one of the things that we really hit on was not uh, not to try to reinvent the wheel or make it proprietary or to uh, make it something that you have to buy from us. Right. It's what can we make that opens up more possibilities that you don't have to go through us to do. You can get a barrel from over here and a gas block from over there. Um, and then also some things that with a standard M16, you probably never be able to do because is it's this your purse. I yeah, see I a purse coming out for people who are listening to this later on audio. A purse has just shown up. Yeah, this is a purse. It matches my shoes and also my gun. It's, it's very sexy. It goes with your beard perfectly. Thank you. So this is the, we, we put a dead foot arms uh, MCS system on it. So the buffer length on it is seriously reduced and it still cycles. Is that a shortened carrier? Say again? Does that have a shortened carrier? Right, yeah, they, they cut off about an inch 36 off the back end of a standard M16 bolt. Okay, uh, bolt. we do the same thing, yeah. Yep. 
and then and and again, this is just taking parts that are already out there. We don't make it. You know, we're just you know showing what's possible. So then we took and put a pistol. This is an actual pistol, as you know, the state of Florida right. um, and other places, I'm sure. Um, but all we've done is made it more modular, so you can put it into a smaller footprint, and anybody can do this. You know, this isn't. You know, we don't own the monopoly on AR-15s. Right. Will that work with a polymer upper? We just got that question in. Uh, probably. I don't. I've never tested anything with polymer anything because that's like saying, um, will it work with socks? I mean, there's a million different kinds of socks, and they're made out of different materials and different kinds of polymer blends, and and so we we pretty much stuck with forged and billet for all of the testing that we've done. Um, there's. Maybe we'll do, we'll, we'll, you know, maybe we'll help out with some experimentation. Sure. Obviously, these guys can't that, dig into everything. That would be great. We, we want the community to be out there doing, you know, testing this and trying that out because, you know, you guys are gun guys and gals too. Right. So get out there and start figuring out what we can do with this. That's kind Absolutely. of the fun part is. Yeah. We'll, we'll do some projects, Walter. What do you think? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think we should we should come up with some projects around this, um, you know. And one of like I'm thinking fifty. I'm thinking fifty BMG in the back of my mind. <laughs> you know. I knew that question was going to come. <laughs> I, I, I think I think you need to uh, take your medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this podcast too long. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I've had people who want me to make me a detachable barrel in my fifty, you know, and I'm like, okay. But they want to put it up like on an AR-15 platform. I'm like, uh, it just ain't gonna fit. You know, it's just too much, too much bullet. I mean, you don't want your thing this big around. I mean, it just, I don't know. Maybe do it could be done. That? Yeah. What do you think, Nate? I think some people like to take everything to the extreme, which isn't necessarily bad. You know, then, with, yeah. 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 Mm. I think it's good in many cases. But right. some people take the extreme to an extreme sometimes. So. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Just, Without any knowledge of what it takes to be extreme. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we oh, still want to do practical things. No cost. Yeah, yeah. So what other questions were you getting? What other questions were you getting from folks out there? If we can remember any, um, I want to I wanna make sure I'm going through this real quick. Um, um, I know we got the polymer question. We don't know. We'll look into that. Or if anyone is interested in doing it, and you get a system, you know, uh, call up, talk to Nate. Right, Nate? You'll you'll help him out. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's not a guarantee. So if you've already got like a build, if you're planning a polymer build and you want to do that, um, get into it. You know, find out. Let us all know. We'll share it. You know, put it out there. We'll see. You know what's coming out of it. Any other things that you want to hit on here, Nate? Uh, well, I, I saw a lot of comments, but I didn't see too many questions. Uh, you yeah. already touched on the multi cow with uh, Walter that you guys, the project. Yeah. You so what is the best thing for folks to do if they want to get in touch with you? Call you, email, uh, what's good? We're, uh, we're very prolific on social media. Uh, so if you need to reach out via Facebook message or call direct to our 800 number or, you know, shoot us an email, we answer everything. I mean, even yeah. some of the stuff, we're not as quick getting back to you because it depends on the notification settings. So if you send us a message in YouTube on our channel, we might not see it for a week, but if you send us a Facebook message or an email, we'll get it and we'll answer it within a day or two. Yeah. I, I, I really tested these guys out. I went down there, asked them a bunch of questions. We spent hours. I think we spent a whole day talking. Yep. Yeah. So they like, they're, they're good guys. They like to talk. They have a lot of, I mean, we, we, they, we could not cover all the knowledge here. I am going to try to get more videos, do some stuff with them. I'm going to uh, obviously do some builds. I know that in general, this general subject that we're, that we're talking around here, folks want me to do some more stuff. So I will, we'll get into it and uh, we'll bring all of that back and share it with you. And if there's more stuff that you guys want to hear from Nate on this subject, Nate, you're always welcome on. I'm always available. You know, yeah. uh, our interaction with customers and fans is, you know, that's number one to us. We're not going to be a successful company if we don't take care of our customers and our fans. So yeah, absolutely. Recognize that. Yeah. And so, and then and we're going to do, we're going to do some more videos. I think we're definitely going to do that Caltech video. So Nate, uh, last word, things you want folks to know out there. Uh, because we're not a publicly traded company, we're privately owned. 
uh, we don't have shareholders that we're beholden to uh, with a 3%, you know, stock dividend or any of that nonsense. We don't have a, a bottom line that we listen to more than our customers. Our customers come first, our fans come first, and that's where we're always going to focus. Uh, so with our products, uh, if I won't put it in my kids' hands, I won't put it on the market. Uh, it's made quality, it's made by it once, invest in it, and do what you want to do with it for the future. And if you ever have a question, we'll answer it, we'll take care of you, we stand behind our products. Awesome. Walter, any things you want to throw out there to folks before I wrap up? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what are you no. guys working on at Safety Harbor? Uh, well, I got some more barrels today. Um, so, from so more 50s going out. Yeah, yep, yep, some more longer barrels. Um, not quite what I was expecting, but it's the, the continuing saga of barrels. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, the never ending uh, well. yeah we need to have that discussion uh, if someone it, it's tough I guess to get uh, you know 50 BMG barrels made right yeah there's not everybody doesn't do it like they are 15 barrels so yeah yeah uh, um, but that's probably gonna lessen inflate in the future here too with this the, the, with the changing market but um I was just doing the normal stuff um, yeah, we do have we have a bunch of videos coming up. We just did a very detailed Sten gun video oh, with Safety Harbor. I gotta get a, I gotta get you a picture of that book. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so we're gonna yeah. do that. I need to actually sit somewhere and edit that video. Oh, well, <laughs> that's gonna little... be fun. I have to actually find the time. So here's what I want to do. I want to wrap it up. You guys stay right here. I'm gonna wrap it up. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Nate Love from. Frontier Tactical for giving us all this time, answering all these questions. It was real awesome. Lola's coming in for some reason. Lola. Lola's coming in to wave at everyone. <laughs> hey, Lola. Go, Lola. So, yeah, um, I want to thank you, Nate, for coming on, answering all these questions. That's that's really cool. And uh, I want to thank – go ahead. Thanks for having me. We definitely appreciate you having us on. Oh, you're welcome. Good guy. I, I'm going to definitely bring more with Nate to you. I want to thank – Walter Keller, Safety Harbor Firearms. To play Thank with you, my Walter. new toys. Yeah, Walter. Walter's getting serious about this stuff, yeah. this podcasting stuff. He got a, a microphone, a camera. We are going to do more stuff. Um, yeah. I, I think folks enjoy our conversations as well, just talking about. And maybe this is how we should do that, um, that uh, you know, that project that we were talking about that's going to yeah. be uh, open source. We should do it like this, where we have some conversations, conversations and parts, and you know, yeah, and talk about it. So we'll probably do that in some of these episodes, and that's probably a good way to go. Safety Harbor sponsors the channel as well as Rand CLP and Andrews Custom Leather, and we we appreciate those guys as oh, well. Big as Daddy's Guns, don't forget Big Daddy's. That's right. Big Daddy Guns is also a big sponsor of this. The the people who are really awesome and out there and helping us, uh, helping drive us forward are the folks on Patreon. You know, things have gotten really tough in the whole YouTube world. And as yeah. you can see, I don't even care anymore <laughs> about like, you know, the. I am doing traditional videos, but I think this stuff is more uh, helpful to folks out there. So we're doing this. So I appreciate everyone on Patreon. There's been a lot of folks getting on and supporting us. Yep. All right. So. Excellent. Peace out, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching, listening, commenting, etc. Thank you.